So this is an architecture of the demo that I'll be doing here. And it, we're gonna cover a, a couple of integration points, if you will. So one is we're gonna start really simple. And, and one of the things I wanna point out to everybody on this webinar is that we've got the capability of download it and do it. So I'm gonna show you a very simple implementation using Ignition Edge running on a Raspberry Pi, integrating Modbus PLCs, representing a wind farm, and getting all that information into not only my ignition system, but into AWS IoT SiteWise. That's something that everyone on this call could do this afternoon. To, to Travis and Don's point, download ignition, install it, configure it like I'm going to show you, and you could have this up and running this afternoon. Then we're going to go and, and look, we've had a lot of interest in LoRaWAN sensors that are available now and trying to integrate those in, especially in terms of things like machine vibration, uh, uh, tank levels, uh, temperatures, and how could we integrate this kind of mishmash of all this LoRa technology that's coming out, apply a data ops mentality to that, and be able to integrate those sensors in very, very quickly. And then finally, let's look at an, a topology where we might have an ignition system already existing in a factory or a facility. And now with the newly introduced BACnet IP capabilities uh, that is native to ignition, maybe we could look at integrating in part of the building management system that's already in a factory, that's already in a facility, along with integrating the manufacturing lines. So the first thing we'll do is we'll start with this very simple ignition edge. So what I've done here is this is uh, the ignition designer running on, on a Raspberry Pi type device. And we want to take and create this notion of a wind farm. So the th first thing we're going to do is leverage this capability in Ignition to build a UDT. And in that UDT, I've, I've said, I want to build a wind turbine model. And that's going to have some parameters. I might want location and who the supervisor was at that location. And then, of course, I want my measurements. I want my RPM, my torque, my wind direction, my wind speed. Now, in this example, we're coming from a Modbus uh, uh, PLC. But tomorrow, this could be an Allen Bradley PLC. And the day after that, it could be a Siemens PLC. And the day after that, maybe it's a BACnet IP device. But we've built the model now that we can standardize on. So now that we've got that defined, let's go and see how difficult it would be to get that into our infrastructure. And again, in this case, we just want to go to, to AWS SiteWise. So we'll look here in our SiteWise service and it lets us build a model. It lets us instantiate that to build an asset and that asset is gonna have measurements. Now, if we look here, we can see that we don't have any models. And we don't have any assets. So what we're going to do, let's go back to our topology drawing. We're going to take the MQTT spark plug and we're gonna to connect to the MQTT server in Amazon, AWS IoT Core, and we're gonna use a service that we've got called Sparkplug SiteWise Bridge that's going to build those models automatically into our SiteWise service running here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into the dashboard for this device. And we can see here, we've got all these modules running on the edge. And we've got MQTT transmission. So how hard is that? Well, the first thing we're gonna do is look at our servers. And I've got this AWS IoT server defined. And well, I've got to give it the URL that I got when I set up my Amazon service. And I'm gonna provide the three TLS certs that I've got to have to connect securely into AWS IoT. Now, once I've got that set up, I simply come in and enable my MQTT connection. Now, at this point, what has happened is we have this edge device representing wind turbines that's publishing spark plug information into AWS. So now if we go back to our IoT SiteWise, one minute ago, we didn't know about any models, but now we have a wind turbine. 
and look at the wind turbine model and see here, here's our attributes, our location and our supervisor, and here are our measurement definitions. We've got a RPM, a wind direction in degrees, a torque, wind speed, and our overdrive status. Now that we've built the model, we know we had two wind turbines in our edge, so we'll go look at our assets and see that we have our two wind turbine model, turbine one and turbine two. And if we look at that, we can see here the supervisor is Arlen Nipper and our location is we're in Kansas City. And here's all of our real-time measurements updating into the time series database and site-wise automatically. So there is a very simple example of how we took Ignition Edge, built a model, and populated that directly into a service in Amazon. Now, if we pop out here to what we can do with LoRaWAN, if any of you are familiar with all of the LoRaWAN devices that are out there right now, uh, we look here and we want to take advantage of this new Yokogawa vibration sensor or a radio bridge level sensor. But before we do that, again, let's jump into this notion of let's define a data model first. So if I go in and look at a sushi vibration sensor, I want to make it humanly understandable. So I've taken all of the uh, um, binary data and I've created a health report. I've created my LoRa metrics for that particular device. Of course, the measurements and we provided all of those diagnostics that nobody ever used because they can't figure out how to break those out. So now we've got the ability on a level transmitter, a vibration transmitter, a 4 to 20 milliamp sensor, and we want to connect that in because at our factory, it might be very valuable to go into the factory and wirelessly be able to start monitoring vibration. So what we're going to do is look at the, our ignition gateway now, and this is our gateway running on an EC2 instance in Amazon, and we're going to go in and look at our designer very quickly. And here's our ignition edge, but notice that we don't have anything connected. We're not connected into that MQTT infrastructure, so we're going to connect to it by going into MQTT engine. And enabling it. Now, what that ignition gateway has done now is gone out to the MQTT infrastructure and it's looking at those devices that we've got coming from that gateway that's got the LoRa sensors on it. And now we've got these devices. Here's our sushi sensor and here's all of the measurements from that sensor. So we've published a model from the very edge all the way in representing a very complex vibration sensor and now our plant can start using that information. So finally let's take a look at the ignition gateway itself and again in a data ops model is that I've got all of these tags coming in and in you know you people using ignition now probably are doing this today and we're going to go to this notion of a smart building tag provider and in that smart building using BACnet IP or Modbus, I might be able to connect to the cooler and to the compressor, and that those are parts of a chiller, and maybe I want to put that in a facility. So now what we've created here is a hierarchical UDT where I've got the notion of a facility that has a chiller, and that chiller comprises of a compressor and all of its measurements and a cooler and all of its measurements. So now that I've defined that UDT, Come back to our tags and we can have the notion of a smart building a campus a line line one area where we want to monitor some of our environmental conditions and our chiller compressor and our cooler now i have that information again i want to get that conveyed to my cloud services as an object and this one happens to be a hierarchical object so we'll go back and right here now we're going to plug this ignition gateway into that same MQTT infrastructure on Amazon. 
So here we've got our same MQTT transmission pointing at the same MQTT server, this AWS IoT, and we're going to go here and just make sure that our smart building transmitter here is, is, is enabled, and it is. We're going to go back to general, and we're going to plug into the infrastructure. Now, again, from a data ops standpoint, I'll just point out while the models are being built that typically we all think of this as asset frameworks and we want, you know, asset IDs and models and locations and things like that. Well, now we're able to build that. So here is my chiller and here's my facility. And notice that in my facility, I've got my attributes, my location and my supervisor, and I've got some measurements from it. Maybe that facility gives me current wind speed, wind direction, current temperature. And again, I'll go back to our actual assets that we built out. And now I've got my smart building with the chiller and the compressor. So I literally, five minutes ago, we didn't know anything about wind turbines. We didn't know anything about LoRa sensors. We didn't know anything about my, maybe our building management system. And now not only do we have that integrated into Ignition, we've got it seamlessly without any coding, all by configuration and tools, have it all the way up in our cloud services as a single source of truth. 